Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California. You know, I want to answer some questions that people have asked me about container gardening, raised bed gardening. I did a video a while back. I don't think a lot of you watched. So we're going to recap it, but I'm going to actually have updates on it. Here you see that I've got buckets of kitchen scraps and leaves and all kinds of stuff. And you know what I usually do. Usually I go and I dump that in totes. And as you know, you know, the totes can have all kinds of stuff in it. But you know what? Before you watch me do what I'm doing here in the yard, in the garden, I think you better understand this first. When I'm filling a container, let's say it, it's a tote. It, and you could do this with buckets or flower pots or wherever you're going to grow in. You know how I put all my sticks in. I put in leaves. I put in all kinds of plant matter. I put in toilet paper rolls. You can even put pine cones in. Paper towels if you've got. You can load it up with everything. All kinds of kitchen scraps. Even something you found in the fridge that you have no idea what it was. You cooked it. It disappeared. It looks like, well, you know what. All that is perfect for your microbes, perfect for your soil. The microbes are gonna go in there and your earthworms are gonna go in there and eat it all up. So we put that in totes and I've got a lot of videos on that. They're not gonna all be the same because you're never gonna have the same stuff and it doesn't matter. The same micro microbes are gonna come in there, they're gonna chomp it all up, your earthworms are gonna come and they're gonna make you terrific soil. So each one will be a little different and that's okay, but what I guess I don't explain a lot after I do all this in containers is that all that that I am doing in a container also known as a raised bed it just may be a small one because we're making it in let's say 18 gallon totes so you can use 30 or you can make a big six foot raised bed in your yard if you've got room is you most certainly can do this in the ground. So let's get back to see what I was doing in the ground way back some years ago and you'll see that what I did in the ground, I actually do in the totes. I found a beautiful little dazzling blue kale that was sitting there in the ground, mind you, not in a container or a tote or anything. And I dug a hole right next to it. I dumped everything in there that I had. Now also a notation here, if you're putting it in the ground, you don't wanna go that deep. Don't dig yourself a two foot hole because worms are actually closer to the surface. They don't really go that deep. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you dig a deep two, three foot hole, you're not gonna find worms usually that far down. So keep it about six, eight inches, and that's all you need. It's a little different in a tote because they're traveling up and down, but in the ground, they're really actually closer to the surface. Then I covered it up really good. The whole thing was covered. Just brought everything back, stomped it down and the whole thing. Now, of course, being in the ground like that and being my backyard, you may have dogs or something running around. So what you do with that, since it's not on a chair, it's not elevated, you just make sure you pat it down real good. Now you're not gonna dig into the roots of a new plant that's there or an old plant. You wanna go next to it. Now if you cut some of the roots, don't worry about it. The plant's gonna be so happy, it's okay. You cover it all back. Now the other thing you can do if you are dealing with, like I said, animals, any animals, be it your dog, possums, raccoons, or whatever, put something on top. Now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a stepping stone, but I want you to keep an eye on that little plant, that little one foot dazzling blue kale, all right? So I here put on a stepping stone and a flower pot. You can use a stepping stone, you can use a flower pot, you can use a few flower pots. Put something around there so it will throw off any critters that are around because after all, you dug a hole and possum could walk by or a raccoon and it's right there. But you put something on top. I like using both, flower pots or stepping stone. Now the thing is, what's gonna happen is the same thing that was going on in the totes. Now all the microbes and the earthworms, you got earthworms all over your yard, whether you see it or not. If you've got a yard and you can plant it in the ground, those earthworms are gonna come there. You've just now created a heaven of a worm farm. They're all gonna gravitate there. They're all gonna come over. They're gonna have babies. You're gonna have all those worms growing there and that plant is gonna take off. That little dazzling blue kale is gonna take off that brassica. Well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna show you what happened within a year. That same kale, nothing moved, nothing changed, took off. The thing was huge. 
It is unbelievable how big it got. It ended up about six foot tall. I left the pots there. Nothing ever bothered it. No dogs, no raccoons, no rats, no mice ever went near it. That thing got so big, it was unbelievable within a year. It just grew like a tree. Why? Because it had all the nutrients it possibly could use and need. What you're doing in a raised bed is you're creating a garden. And it doesn't matter if it's in the ground or if it's in a tote. You most certainly can do this in the ground. And everywhere around it is going to benefit from all the kitchen scraps. You can dig a long trench if you wanted to and cover it all up. But then you're, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of kitchen scraps and let's say you did put meat in there or something, you could attract something. And yes, you can put meat in there if you want. If you had leftover meat that you didn't eat, but a lot of people don't use that because that is the biggest attractor to animals over rotting vegetables. Okay, that's the main reason. But all that will break down. Do not kid yourself. That thing grew so big in less than a year, it was unbelievable. Do we do that now? Yes. If I've got a plant in the ground growing, I will dig a hole, bury some leaves. I do it right now. I just don't talk about it. Push in some collard leaves and stuff and then cover it up with soil. If I'm just putting collard leaves in there, I don't have to cover it. I don't have to do anything as far as a stepping stone or flower pot. I can just dig a hole, put the leaves in there and cover it up. Make sure you want to water around the plant, which you're going to do anyways. You don't have to water where you filled the hole with your, let's say, leaves from the garden. But you're going to water your plant, it's going to drizzle into the ground, and it's going to keep it nice and damp. And the microbes, the earthworms, everything is going to come and break it up. You could go back and dig it up later. It's going to be all gone. The point is, what you do in a container, you most certainly can do in the ground. So if you've got some plants, even trees, if you've got trees and you want to feed them, it's, it's kind of the old thing. I used to go fishing with my dad. And... He'd clean the fish or I'd clean the fish and then he'd have the heads of the fish and he'd tell me, go out there and plant them underneath the trees. Well, that's what you're doing with your vegetable plants, but you're putting in plant matter, unless you've got fish heads and if you're going fishing, you've got that. Most certainly put that in there. Do put a stepping stone or flower pot over that. But yes, you can do that in the ground and yes, you will have the same results. Your plants will take off. You will have the biggest plants. It will be unbelievable how they grow. This is the best plant food you can give your plants. This is mother nature's way. It doesn't matter what leaves you've got. It doesn't matter if you want to bury grass clippings. As long as there's nothing sprayed on it, it's got nothing like that. Because if you put anything in there that's been treated with any type of inhibitor, whether it's for weeds or anything, it will hurt your plants. You've got to know it's good leaves. That's why I like taking leaves from my own vegetable garden. Even my own trees, it doesn't matter. But that works perfect. So go ahead. A few of you have asked me, can I dig a hole next to my plants? And can I do this? And will it work? Well, now you've seen it. It does work. So I hope I've answered some questions. Go ahead and ask more so we can all get gardening on the free side. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.